Welcome to Cape Town. As Brett and Eddie got to customs, they knew that this was where they parted ways, as citizens had a separate queue. Eddie held his hand out to Brett. It was amazing to meet you, Brett. I hope our paths cross again. Brett shook his hand, smiling. I'm sure we will. The moment felt awkward, so they both stared down their aisles, not looking back. When Eddie got to the arrivals waiting area, he scoured the crowd for his pickup. He spots an elderly man holding a sign saying, Welcome to Cape Town, Mr. E. Chen. He makes his way over. Hi, I'm Eddie Chen. You can call me Eddie. The man's face lit up, like he saw a long-lost relative. Welcome, welcome, he says, as he grips one of Eddie's hands with both his, shaking it up and down. Eddie can't help but smile at the warm greeting. They make their way towards an elevator with the sign, Car Park. When they exit the elevator, Eddie could immediately feel it was summer. Coming from the mild winter up north, the change wasn't too extreme though. His host showed him to a small flat. He opened the back to stow away the suitcase and bag. Eddie made his way to the front passenger seat, but was surprised to be greeted by a steering wheel when he opened the door. Oops. He forgot not all countries drive on the right, drive around the left. He apologized and walked around to the other side. The first thing he noticed was how open everything was as they exited the airport. No tall buildings. The tallest one he could spot was maybe ten stories high, and it stood out amongst everything else. The other thing he noticed was how green everything was. My name is Johan, the man said. You hand? Eddie tried. No, no, the man laughed. It's easy, just break it up. Yo, same as so, and Han, as in honey without the E. Yo, Han, Eddie said slowly. Got it. First time in South Africa? Johan asks. Yes. I've never been anywhere in Africa. It seems so green. And such wide open spaces. It's beautiful. They stop in front of a flat roofed, pink house. On the wall is a sign showing this is Auntie Sue's guest house. They fetch the luggage from the back and Johan leads him to the side gate to the door. He knocks a few times. Almost immediately, Eddie hears the key turn, and then a short, chubby woman opens the door with a smile. She was wearing a dress with blue and white flowers, a yellow headscarf, and a green apron. She was almost as colorful as the houses around here, Eddie thought. Come in, she said, stepping aside. I'm Sue. You can call me Sue or Auntie Sue. How is your flight? You must be tired. Are you hungry? Let me make some tea. Go show the poor boy to his room. Don't just stand there. Eddie didn't know which part to respond to, so he just smiled and followed Johan down a passage to a room adjacent to the small living area. Johan put the suitcase on a chair next to the bed and slings the bag over the back of the chair. It seemed to Eddie like he stepped back in time. The room had a four-poster bed with a quilt in different shades of blue. Heavy blue velvet curtains hung by the window, through which he could see the bright yellow house next door. Next to the bed was a wooden chair with a blue velvet seat. There was a dresser opposite the bed, which is now used as a TV stand. The room had a plush brown carpet. It seemed unfamiliar, yet very welcoming. The door here on the left is a cupboard, if you want to unpack anything. The door on the right is your bathroom. Let's have some tea, then you can relax a while before supper. They walk back to the living area. Only now, Eddie takes in the decor, as he sits down to pour himself some tea from the silver set Sue set out on a small table. The walls were decorated with wallpaper. Small pink roses. The furniture was all wood with cushions to sit on. Against one wall was an antique-looking glass cabinet. Inside, at least a hundred little knick-knacks were spaced out across four glass shelves. On the opposite wall, there was a fireplace. Above it were old, discolored pictures of people all dressed up in suits, ties, bonnets, 
and frills. Have you decided what you will do on your trip? Do you have family here? Are you staying only in Cape Town, or are you planning to see the rest of the country as well? Sue starts. Buttons, let him answer in between also. You will make his head spin, Johan said, waving his hand in the air. What a peculiar pet name, Eddie thought to himself. He answered as much as he could. As for plans, he didn't really have any. Wait, wait, this will help, Johan said as he gets up and goes down the passage. He returns with a book, which he hands to Eddie, a guide to South Africa. Now you go and rest a bit. Dinner is at seven, Sue said, as she took the empty cup from Eddie, placed it in the tray, and took it towards the kitchen 